gravity. It gives weight to physical objects and guides the motion of the planets and the tides. Gravity can threaten your safety should you fall from great heights, or it can securely fasten you to the surface of the beautiful planet you call home. Gravity is one of the ways in which two separate objects and the atoms they're made of are drawn toward one another. But why? What poles matter together? By the end of this video, you will understand that gravity, like the rest of physical nature, can be clearly explained through interactions between simple material objects. Even better, you will finally understand why, as Newton famously related, the force of gravity falls off with the square of the distance between objects. Most people think that the mystery of gravity's cause was already solved by Einstein's space-time construction of general relativity, where gravity is explained as a consequence of a body's motion along geodesic lines in a space-time that's curved in their presence. However, this is not the physical explanation you might think. Space-time, it turns out, is a four-dimensional manifold where the non-spatial dimension is time. This makes it an idea rather than a surface-bound material object that's capable of cause and effect. At the end of the day, general relativity can only describe what is apparent. It does not reveal material cause. Our explanation for gravity and the inverse square law starts with the atom. Experiments in quantum mechanics suggest that 99.999% of the surface of the atom, its electron shell, exists within 430 picometers of the nucleus. Experimentation also suggests that the remaining 0.001% of the atom's surface extends indefinitely, meaning that it can be detected at a great distance from the atomic nucleus. One way to rationalize this empirical finding is to imagine that the surface of the atom persists as thinned radial filaments capable of interaction with atomic neighbors. This allows us to consider gravity as a product of nodal atomic architecture, like that which is used for schematizing quantum computing systems, as is shown in this paper. Einstein himself foreshadowed this paradigm when he wrote that, quote, physical objects are not in space, but these objects are spatially extended. In this way, the concept empty space loses its meaning. Taken together, this suggests that physical interconnections between atoms, forged from the atoms themselves, could be responsible for the pull of gravity. Consider how this interconnected model relates to Newton's universal law of gravitation. The idea is quite simple. The closer objects are to one another, the more gravity is apparent between them. More precisely, Newton related that gravitational intensity increases by a factor of distance squared. This is called the inverse square law of gravitation. To illustrate why this relationship occurs, it's best to start with two simple atoms and understand the cause of their attraction. Then we can simply scale up our understanding to composite bodies made of gazillions of atoms. Here's an atom. It has a radiative architecture with filaments extending into the distance. Here's another atom. It's easy to see that as the atoms approach one another, increasing numbers of filaments contact the neighbor's shell. We can imagine that when a filament of one atom encounters its neighbor's surface, a physical connection could be established such that additional tension is loaded between them. What we propose is that the force of gravity or gravitational intensity can be understood as a product of how many connections are thus established in a given location between atoms. Gravitational force scales precisely with the inverse square of distance simply due to the radiative architecture of the one atom coupled to the exposed surface area of the other. For clarity in counting connections, let's approximate the surface that's exposed to connectivity on one atom with a planar square of the same dimension. We make this square area slightly larger to account for the slightly increased surface area due to shell curvature. When this area profiles at a distance of two arbitrary units, d equals two from a second atom whose surface radiates evenly spaced filaments in all directions, we see that four connections pass through this cross-section. Let these four connections represent a gravitational intensity of four. Following from Newton, when we have the distance between the atoms, moving from d equals two to d, the gravitational intensity will be two squared times stronger than it was at d equals two. 
Since we had 4 connections at d equals 2, we'd expect 16 connections at d. And this is exactly how many connections we find in our radiating atomic model. Having the distance always increases connectivity by 4. Doubling the distance always thins connectivity by 1 quarter in exact accordance with Newton's law of gravitation. Replacing the planar square area with another atom of the same dimensions doubles the number of connections, which is why there are two masses, m1 and m2, in the famed Newtonian law. Mass simply scales the absolute number and size of atoms involved in the force calculation, but it is their proximity, and so the geometric availability of their surfaces, that creates the inverse square relationship. We hope this interpretation of the laws of gravity helps the next generation of engineers design and build tools that'll take humans to the stars. If we're to manipulate gravity itself, we must not stop our pursuit of understanding at descriptive schematizations of phenomena, no matter how precise they might be. We must always strive for unfettered physical mechanism in science. Please subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Topics lined up for this channel include mechanisms for light and other electromagnetic phenomena, the infamous double slit experiment, photoelectricity, and anything else that you folks request. Also check out our other channel, Demystifying Science, and our weekly podcast by the same name, where we see what the greatest minds on Earth are up to right now. Links are in the description, and as always, thanks for watching.